Ted Hall, founder of ShopBot Tools. We're here at uh, Autodesk University and uh, illustrating the way in which on one of our small desktop CNC tools, um, you're able to cut a larger part than the tool itself is uh, measured for by essentially registering the part through um, the tool in the cutting process. And in this case, it allows you to cut uh, long pieces of furniture that are um, paneled into th three separate tiles for the cutting of the project. Well, the normal cutting area for this little tool is uh, 18 inches deep by 24 inches wide. But you can essentially register through, index through, whatever kind of uh, length of sheet you're able to handle. In this case, we put some outfeed support on in order to uh, run the material through the tool. And we've created this uh, indexing system, a notched indexing system, that allows us to move precisely the panel down uh, through the, uh, the cutting process. These are the parts we're actually cutting for this chair down here. Besides illustrating the indexing the part through the tool, what they also show is the degree to which with the digital fabrication technology, you're able to embed complexity into a part at virtually no cost. So cutting the tenons on these parts would be very difficult by hand, but essentially the tool doesn't care how complicated the part is. It might take a few seconds longer to cut it, but basically you're able to cut curves, fancy joints, and so on at uh, no added cost and with a high degree of precision so that you're able to uh, embed your assembly and engineering right into the part. And that allows creating all sorts of new ways to build things. Here we're at just illustrating a simple mortise and tenon, but it allows putting together this chair with a whole lot of precision um, and basically embedding the engineering, assembly, and um, fabrication technique right into the parts. If you're comfortable with CAD and comfortable with using computers, the learning curve is very fast. It's uh, the real challenge for digital fabrication in general is mastering the CAD side, not mastering the tool side. And the only thing that makes the tools hard to use, the subtractive tools like uh, CNC routers and mills hard to use, is that it's not immediately intuitive to uh, woodworkers the importance of holding the part rigidly in position. Once you master the, the hold down approaches, whether it's vacuum or clamps or fixturing, then the methods are pretty straightforward. You can start with clamps. Actually, the first thing people often use is just drywall screws, screwing into the deck. Um, the next level is a clamp or wedges like we're using here and different kinds of fixturing systems. And then you start into vacuum. Most people start with low-end vacuum would be a couple shop vacs, and from there you can go up to industrial vacuum, which can be twice as expensive as the tool. They give you a lot of flexibility with a full universal vacuum that sucks down through the table of your tool. You can basically just lay a sheet of material down and be pretty confident that the parts will be held in, as long as they're not any smaller than about a six inch diameter. Smaller than that, even vacuum, good vacuum, is, is much more difficult to work with. And you end up tabbing uh, parts in, which is how these parts were actually held in when we, uh, when we cut them. You can see they're partially broken out here, but um, there are little tabs that held these parts in uh, while they were cut. And that allowed, them to do, allowed us to do it on this table without having a, a vacuum system or screwing things down. And this tool works well for cutting wood, plastic, aluminum. It's uh, a nice little high precision uh, cutting machine.